trappings of the ego. And the laws of creation in terms of when individuals are living beyond their means, especially now in terms of social media, so often people feel that they have to put this inauthentic um, face forward in terms of their actual life experience where they're at and essentially I call this living with champagne tastes on a beer budget you know you haven't earned the right to live that luxurious lifestyle because you haven't worked for it everybody wants to have all of the finer things but nobody wants to do the work to get there and this becomes a problem of ego because again it's wanting to put that face forward that you are a certain way or you live a certain way or you have a certain level of success by posting things or you know appearing a certain way that is completely inauthentic okay because then you undoubtedly go home to a rental property that you don't keep clean or you don't you know and i'm not saying you specifically what i'm saying is from a third party perspective this is completely inauthentic and it's a misrepresentation of who and what you really are if you're going out living this fancy lifestyle posting it up you know out there all the time and this is a trapping of the ego the ego wants the appearance to be you know this way or that way but really the issue with this is that it causes the individual to overextend themselves for this version of themselves that is completely inauthentic it wasn't earned it wasn't diligently worked for and undoubtedly that is what leads to the fall okay you also see this in cases where you have you know children that come from extremely affluent families that are never required to do any work or required to put in the effort they have all of these nice things they have this air of entitlement that is again it wasn't earned anybody that works hard for what they have they know the amount of hard work that goes into things they know that nothing is easy therefore those individuals are also going to be kind to each and every person on their path because at one point they were likely also sleep uh, they were likely also sweeping the floors and scrubbing the toilets as well when you start from ground zero it builds humility into you so it is that law of right action the law of creation that you are learning you're going you know up the steps of the pyramid to that higher level of calibration and success and authenticity but to get there it takes hard work and what i see so many people doing which is a total disservice to their self-esteem and their overall you know foundational knowing of self is posting a false image online that they actually have no infrastructure behind it is inauthentic it is not truly where they are in life and what they can afford remember those champagne tastes on a beer budget and yet they try to present themselves as such and it's deeply difficult for the individual that is in in essence lying about who they are because again they can't really ever show all of themselves because they are putting on a false bravado they are putting on a mask they're not being authentic and again that leads to fear when we move out of authenticity and we are not being true to where we're actually at we're putting forth a false image and anything that is not rooted in reality and is not rooted in authenticity is going to lead to fear because we're building our house we're building our foundation 
on quicksand, on something that is not stable. And so how does this, how do we tie this back into our, our growth? And how do we tie this back into really reaching for our own success? Well, first of all, one of the things I've always done was be really, really real about where I was in life, whether it was going through a bankruptcy, whether it was, you know, losing everything and starting from scratch. I was always very real with myself and very authentic with others. I would talk about what I was going through. I would share it. I wouldn't try to be something outside of what I was. And this was extremely powerful in terms of my own life journey because I was never putting on a false pretense. Because of that, I really had the right tools in terms of building myself slowly up. I knew that I had to start with sweeping the floors. I knew that I had to start with $10 in my bank account, $500 in my bank account, $2,000 in my bank account, and so on and so on. And those slow and steady building blocks, really being authentic to where I was, allowed me to slowly grow to where I am now. Now, certainly at this point in my life, I can't afford those things. I worked very hard for them, but I've also suffered through all of the obstacles that have allowed me to get to this point. And it's, it's well earned. Whereas when, you know, we're going out and that is the crux of our existence is, you know, living in a false reality. We're never really paying attention to, you know, digging the foundation of ourselves, digging the foundation of what we need to create before we build, you know, the Taj Mahal on top of the ground, right? So I just feel like it's, it's something that people need to hear. They need to start at ground zero. They need to start with the basics and earn the right to live a good life. And in the case where, again, they've maybe been born into a situation of wealth where things have been somewhat easy for the individual, I, I actually don't feel that, that that's a, an easier path. This is the reason why. When you grow up in poverty, when you grow up with lack, from day one, you understand how to have excellent work ethic. If you grow up with a silver spoon in your mouth and everything is easy for you, it leads or it tends to lead to this attitude of frustration, of you know being entitled, demanding, but not really understanding the work ethic of how to build. And it becomes a huge deficit, both emotionally and intellectually as you move through life because you haven't seeded those formidable skills that allow you to have that grit and that hustle that you need to really perform in life. So I'm not saying that it's not wonderful to grow up in a situation where, you know, everything was really taken care of for you and you had a lot of fun, but it does create certain deficits in later life in terms of work ethic. So what is the lesson here? What is sort of the point? Well, essentially, it is to get really real with yourself about where you are and what you need to do to create that dream reality. Okay. Of course, the law of attraction comes into this massive amounts of positivity. I've always created massive amounts of positivity in everything that I've ever done. It doesn't matter if I'm sweeping the floors or cleaning the toilets or, you know, working on a spreadsheet. I'm happy when I'm doing that. Part of this as well is authenticity, knowing where you're at, knowing that you have to mop those floors to be able to sit at that granite table eventually. Okay. And knowing that <clears throat> there's also an element of divine timing that plays into this. The universe always knows what you need when you need it. And it's going to undoubtedly ask for you to do the work before and it's always in preparation for whatever that divine design is for you, for your unique energy, for your unique life path. But don't get caught in this cycle of 
the ego of wanting to be something you're not, be, you know, at a destination before you're really ready to be there and being all, you know, everything that glitters that's truly not gold until you really are that balanced golden version of yourself. There is so much beauty in digging your own ditches. There is so much beauty in the hard work that creates character, that creates resilience, that creates leadership and a stability within you by doing that hard work. I've always found that it never ever serves you well to cut corners, never. In life, we have to do things rightly and righteously in order to reap the true divine rewards of things. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I'm actually going to speak at some high schools, so really excited about um, the rest of this day here. And I will see you in the next video.